Thank you, Madam. Uh, Madam, I've listened to the Minister's uh, roundup speech, uh, and um, I have to take issue with his ascribing to me personal motives of pride and arrogance, uh, because I think nothing can be further from the truth. And um, the reason why we raise this matter for public discussion and debate is because we want to improve things for the future. So I, I, I definitely do not accept uh, his description of those motives to me personally. Uh, and I'd like uh, to make a few clarifications. I've counted them. There are about eight. Okay, the first is that the minister mentioned that um, uh, he, he, I exercise uh, my rights as chairman of the Song Council to waive a tender for the MA contract when it was first awarded uh, after the GE. And of course, as he knows, under the rules, uh, there is provision to do so provided that you satisfy the conditions for the waiver. And uh, at that time, it was the reasons were, were recorded accordingly, as in there was urgency in the public interest and in large part due to the uh, termination clause present uh, for the TCMS to be cut off. So we need to actually put in place an MA to handle the, 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 the handover, and the time was running against us. Now, the second point he mentioned was that uh, about the open tender that was called one year later, that is a fact. And um, it is true, of course, that there were three companies that picked up the documents at that time, uh, and only FMSs tendered. Now, we realize our duties when dealing with a sole tenderer, that we need to ensure value for money for our residents. So in actual fact, uh, we went through some due diligence and actually commissioned a special audit of that uh, tender award. So uh, we've gone through a special audit uh, in the case of awarding the tender to, to our MA in uh, 2012, and the auditors have in the main said that the uh, tender was in compliance and we did take our due diligence to ensure uh, value for money for our residents. Now he quoted certain prices uh, on property units. Uh, I will have to double check on that because I think that there may be some error in the prices that he mentioned. But in any case, uh, the other contracts that he talked about were actually awarded earlier. Uh, based on earlier pricing, so I think you know inflation and so on would affect e EDU pricing. So I think uh, you know we need to compare uh, uh, apples uh, uh, for apples. So in, in actual fact, I mean just to reaffirm, we have actually done a special audit for that. Now um, the next point that the minister mentioned was uh, my the part of my speech where I said that. Uh, I asked whether the tender to AIM was really in substance open because one of the conditions of the contract was that all of the directors needed to have uh, town council experience and not just IT experience. So the point being made there was about software companies. How many software companies really have all the directors having uh, town council experience? But Minister came back to say that, oh, our MA uh, would be such a person. But actually, our MA is not a software company. They are actually an estate management company. So, so it, is, it is an account for software companies that I was uh, asking that question. Now, perhaps the most important clarification I should make is he appears to suggest that um, the setup of FMSS and so on um, was due to some preferential treatment being given by our TC management to our party supporters, as he put it. Now, I'd like to set some facts straight. Of course, it is true that FMSS was uh, set up after the May 2011 general election, and uh, the landscape of that was this as well. One is that we all know that there are only certain companies in the market that do town management for HDB estates. Uh, I can name them as a fact, as Marco, EM Services, CPG. And um, we knew at that point in time that all these companies have contracts with PAP town councils. And um, in fact, uh, the incumbent MA of Arjunet requested to be released because they thought that it would be uh, detrimental to their business interests because they were doing work for uh, PAP town councils and they felt that in the, you know they could not carry on working for both town councils. So it's with that landscape that we had to make a certain decision to find an MA willing to work with us in the town council. So you know the setup of SMSS was because of this very real possibility that we'll be faced with no nobody else to do it for us, and we stand by that to say that we acted in our residents' interest to ensure continuity because of, of this landscape. I'm not sure why the members in the house are laughing because I think perhaps they have not been in this position as we have, but these are other facts. Um, now, uh, the next clarification which I should repeat is that FMSS uh, shareholders and directors are not WP members at all. So it is very different from AIM as Member Denise Paul pointed out. It's not really a parallel to, to, to all that comparison. Uh, seventh point is like, 
I wonder whether Minister can confirm his personal view about whether a termination of one month's notice for critical IT system is reasonable. How does that not jeopardize residents' interests when you have such a clause? I'd like his personal view on that. And a last clarification for now is that um, he mentioned, as, as some others have mentioned, that we are raising this issue of AIM uh, as an excuse for a poor performance or alleged poor performance under the TCMR. Uh, he's asking why we did not raise it earlier when we knew uh, of it earlier. Okay, so as he well knows, I mean, and I've stated this publicly in the past, one reason was that we needed to take over, and it's true that we were busy with that. But the second thing is also that we needed the public to see the, the sting of the clause before they can understand how it can jeopardize the handover. So, uh, you know, it's a question of when it's appropriate to raise it. So, so these are my clarifications for now, Mr. I really do not intend to go point by point, you know, because there are more related issues, you know, for what uh, to do. The FMSS and so on, I'm not saying that it was wrong, you know, because the current town councils did allow it. My main point was, because to point out that are there major differences in nature of these two transactions, FMSS and AIM, I think Mr. William chose to define very narrowly that it is to be a party members. But I'm saying that no, I think party affiliation is a, is a, is a key point. And the, the shareholders of FMSS are clearly, while well, they are not party members of the UP, they are clearly strongly strong supporters of workers' party. And we talk about, about uh, related parties, those are definitely uh, have, have to come within this ambit. The point about the uh, management rate, higher rates, etc., etc., we can always produce those data for her to compare. Mr. Pritam Singh. Mr. Pritam Singh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I mean, it was, it was helpful to, to learn of all these uh, revelations about FMSS here in this house. It was actually quite quite useful to know that you know revelations about PAP owned companies how many PAP owned companies there are in Singapore what business do they do this is a piece of information that a lot of Singaporeans are very curious about um, that's not been answered I'm not sure whether this is the, 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 the appropriate forum for it but the key the key instance here is FMSS is not a WP owned company and I think that's the point that we're stressing to the public uh, the second point I'd like to make in regard to this issue is the final point I made before I ended off my speech, which is in so far as the strategic review of PCs are concerned, uh, MND should really look at directing companies fully owned by political parties, not having any business dealing with town councils. Now, I understand the minister extended that to say party supporters also, but that would make it really hazy because everybody goes to the polls. Somebody votes for PDP, somebody votes for WP. Nobody will be, will be able to bid for a TC contract under that definition. So what we're saying is political parties should be removed uh, from having business dealings with TCs. And, and let's be open about it. Let's be completely transparent. Both, both parties, PAP, WP, everybody, any party that contests. That's the first point. And I think we really haven't got that assurance yet. Second point I'd like to make is with regard to some of these numbers that were going on. Well, before the WP won Aljunet Town Council under the leadership of Giorgio, that town council had the highest SNCC rates, in addition to one other PAP town, town council, of any town council all over Singapore. So I think the numbers, I think, ought to be looked at in a different perspective. There are other ways of looking at, you know, how much value residents are getting for their dollar. But in so far as we are concerned, Aljunet Haugang Congolese Town Council with FMSS at the helm, we will not we will make sure that residents actually get full value for the dollar. And that's our assurance to them, and we will serve them to the best of our abilities. Madam Speaker, the point about SNCC is precisely one of those great concerns of MND. Because when town councils, for political reasons, one thing to be populist and reduce fees or set low fees when they are not appropriate. They are sacrificing long-term financial viability of the town councils. So 
So that, 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 is, that is one point. The second point is, Mr. Pritamji, of course, wants to define party affiliation narrowly, which I disagree. The you know, Trump is, is, is a, we are the policy owner, you know, and we have good reasons to define party affiliations. Why they cannot be so narrow as just party own. And FNFS shareholders are not ordinary Singaporeans when, when Pritam Singh say, now by widening this definition, it covers the whole Singapore. It doesn't. They are strong, clearly long-term supporters of the Workers' Party. So the question about AIM and, and, and PAP company, AIM is the only PAP company. Sylvia Lim. Thank you, Madam. Um, Minister did not answer my clarification on his personal view of whether a one-month termination clause for a critical IT system is reasonable and does not jeopardize continuity of service to residents. So, I reply very indirectly in the way I handle the NUH project that if you want, there are standard software available in the market. So indeed, there's one month, there are, there are available software which you can buy into. But in this case, the key point is not that. The key point is, ARM is most willing to extend if only you ask, you didn't. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Minister, I'd just like to request that with regard to the strategic review of town councils that is coming up, can we have a regime which is open, transparent, where residents can find out completely every single detail they need to know or want to know about the uh, contractors that, that are tendering for town council contracts? Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. I'm sure SMFD will be talking to you to get uh, more views from you. Sylvia Lim. Oh, yes, Madam. A clarification on the Minister's uh, last but one res uh, response. Uh, he cited his experience in the hospital to say that uh, you know you can always buy uh, software off the market. But, but does he not agree that uh, town council management software is actually customized? And, and I, I don't know what, he, what other software he's suggesting can be bought off the market. Madam Speaker, I, I didn't want to say this, but trying to make Malcolm out of a more here you know, from all of this, this big name, was it town council management, town TCMS, you know, when you dive into it, what is it? These are financial packages because every organization has to charge fees, have to collect revenue, and there will be bad debts to deal with account receivable, account, account payable, and then there are purchase orders they have to settle. And of course, out of this, you need to settle your chart of accounts so that you can put up your monthly statements for balance sheets, for your PL, for auditing purposes. And of course, some add in other things like human resource packages because you need to recruit staff, HR management, how many staff do you have, what grade, salary, so they can pay payroll. All organizations have that kind of requirements and there are standard software available. Ms. Lina Chiam? Uh, I'd like to ask the Minister for some clarification. clarification. Uh, yes, a uh, point of clarification. Uh, the Minister mentioned that I was a true, uh, Vice Chairman and Town Secretary. And I wish to stress that I was a chairman, Vice Chairman and Town Secretary for only a short while and not for 27 years. <laughs> and also, uh, will the Minister still consider appointing PAP advisor to ROCs? Sorry? Oh yeah, will the minister still, or will the minister consider still appointing advisor to ROCs, who is uh, consider uh, appointing appointing PAP advisors to ROCs, even though he is not an MP? That does not come under my purview. Ms. Sylvia Lim. 
Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I'd like to ask the Minister about what he earlier said about the standard software packages that he thinks could be purchased for town management. Um, this seems to contradict uh, what Mayor Thieu has been saying about you know, how there was a need to you know, look at the redevelopment options and how to make sure that things are optimized for the town council. So um, I wonder whether the Minister could, could explain, you know, in this context, I mean, what does he mean? <laughs> are the PAP town councils wasting too much time? It's very simple, because I made that point earlier too. Is if you want sophistication, if you want bells and whistles, of course not for the fun of doing it, because it does improve on productivity, efficiency, then you have to you have to you have to build it up. You know, which is what we've been doing because please, we have been running town councils for twenty odd years and so many town councils, you know. Mr. Hmm. I have two questions from the minister. One is that the minister said that the tender period was open for three weeks and that um, tenderers could seek clarifications. Um, it was reported in the new paper that one of the tenderers said that um, after paying more than $200, we simply got a thin stack of documents and the town councils were unable to provide us with more information. So did MND interview the other four companies when they were doing the review? And um, the other um, clarification I have um, is that um, the minister said that the aim is not an ordinary $2 paid up company and he has helped to develop the uh, TCMS systems previously. Now, um, this does not gel with my own personal information. I happened um, from 2000 to 2003 to uh, work with Horizon and I'm pretty aware that they have a town management technology company that claimed that in November 1994, it built the town management systems entirely for the 19 PAP. Um, town Council. So I would like to seek the Minister's clarification on this part of the report, which says that the AIM had built the, re the systems. Uh, what manpower did AIM have at that point in time? What was AIM's role in the first generation system? And finally, just to make a point, as, one, as a person who is in the IT industry for the last 20 years, um, I find the Minister's suggestions that we can just buy an off-the-shelf solution for the Town Council's operations to be um, Impossible. Thank you. The off-the-shelf comment, off-the-shelf uh, software thing, I think we, we have noted your, your, your comment, but my key point is AIM did not ask to terminate. So that one month was built in, it is their legal right to do so, they never intended to do so, they were prepared to extend but there was no ask, no request, and therefore nothing happened. The horizon history, honestly, I'm not familiar because uh, we are just focused on this 2010 uh, transaction and related issues. The past, I, I really do not. I was not involved myself, so I could not add value to this particular comment. Your first point, what was it? I can't remember now. The first point is whether, um, because the minister mentioned that the tenderers had three weeks to seek oh, okay. clarification. Okay. I thought that was already in my reply. Oh, 